We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order at 1.35. Thank you. Can we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Roll call, please. Priscilla Manilito. Present. Kevin Mitchell. Here. Lynn Heineman. Sandra Jeff. Joe Manini. Present. Thank you. Two, we have um, a, approval of agenda. Board members? Motion to approve the agenda. Hi, Mr. Inman. Motion made by Mr. Mitchell for approval of the agenda. Roll call, please. Mr. Menini? Yes. Mr. Heineman? Ms. Manuelito? Yes. Thank you. We will now enter into a closed session, executive session, limited personnel matters related to supervision of superintendent, evaluation of superintendent, receipt of complaint from superintendent, report on personnel from the superintendent, and discussion on the employment contract of the superintendent. As permitted by section 10-15-1H2 of the New Mexico Open Meetings Act and communication with legal counsel regarding pending and threatening litigation as permitted under section 10-15-1H7 of the New Mexico Open Meetings Act. Can I please have a motion to enter into executive session? Madam Chair, I move we move into executive session as explained. Thank you. Roll call. Mr. Manini? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Manuelito. Yes. Thank you. 100%. Madam President, I move we come out of executive session. Thank you very much, Mr. Menini. Roll call, please. When you're ready, John. Miss, Miss Jeff. Present. Mr. Heineman? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Here. Ms. Yes. Manuelito? Yes. And it's 4 24. 24. Thank you. Just to let you all know that no formal action was taken at this time by the board and no other items were discussed. Mr. Hiddeman? 
Madam President, um, ladies and gentlemen, the board agreed uh, that I would make a brief statement here because we know that there are many things that have been st stated uh, about uh, various things, actions going on in the district and by the board members, and those are a concern and interest to all of us. That's why you're here, I'm sure, and why we're here. <clears throat> there have been many allegations and things in many cases that we regard as misinformation and disinformation, but one of the things that was made public uh, since our last meeting was, were two letters from the State Department, Public Education Department, that some of you I'm sure have read. And what we want to simply do is to assure you that we regard some of those uh, actions by the state or the communications by the state to be based on hearsay. They have not contacted the board for verification or information regarding the allegations that were reported to the state, but that we are working very methodically in addressing the, uh, the items that were raised in those letters, and we are working on preparing a response uh, and possible action plans were needed, a response to the state PED, we call it, the Public Education Department, and just to assure you that we are not ignoring those things at all, that's what we've been working on, and uh, to, to work out what will be appropriate response and any needed actions. Thank you very much, Lynn. We'll go ahead and move forward on our agenda to three, review of bids and proposals from contracting of new auditors and review IEC audit and report to the board action and contract auditors. Board members, you did receive a list. Any questions or comments on this item? I have a question. I'm, I'm confused. Um, one, we don't have any bids or proposals. Um, I had to call Andy to get a interpretation on on this one uh, about what what are you you looking for, and he said we're looking at proposals to hire a firm to review the existing audit for accuracy. Um, confirm, deny um, if those findings are, are true or not. But then today I hear you're not accepting this audit and you're looking for another auditor to do a new contract. I need that um, clarified because that has to go in the proposal to get the, that has to go in the RFP to get the proposals and or bids. So I, I need clarification. I th I think, um, Superintendent, um, we are acknowledging this independent accountant's report, not an audit. This, this is not an audit. It's a report. It's a review of practices. Yes. So um, we need to quit referring to it as an audit. Um, we are acknowledging this report, and we are going to be asking um, to have it reviewed on um, some of the items that we we think that are alarming and need to be looked into, um, but we would also like to include um, the audit to. Um, I would like to make a motion, I guess, at this time too, to add that the audit go all the way up to the 2015-16 school year, um, as far as um, JOM funding and any money returned, any money missing. You know, I think um, we might as well include all of that so we have that um, all up to date as well. And I'm, you know, I, I think that we, um, I know um, the time we were going over and the actual state audit that we had and then the Navajo Nation when they were here, um, I do recall asking the Navajo Nation um, 
about their audit they do with the Johnson O'Malley and Gallant McKinley County School District. They did say at that time that they do conduct their own audits for each district. So I'm, I'm thinking that we, what we also need to do is maybe ask the Navajo Nation for their copies of their audits that they have done on this district to see what findings they have as well. And then, and then that way we have um, all areas covered. Um, Madam, Madam yes. Chair? So, um, Mr. Mitchell, you're asking that that be included on this. Is that, is that what your, your motion is? Yes, my motion is to include all that and then um, to have them visit, um, this report that we have here from the Manning and Accounting Associates, um, plus adding on that they go through the 2015-16 school year um, on our Indian education program. And if I'm not correct, Mr. Mitchell, you're requesting the Navajo Nation for all their audits that they have performed against this district or for this district, on this district? Um, yes. Thank you. And we do have our state audit, too, so I don't know if the, um, our state audit or, or the first audit that we had, Giovanna, that included a section on Indian education. Um, we could also put, um, add that and, and get recopies, I guess, of that portion, and then we can get, um, that way we can have them all together. Yes. So let me clarify a motion for a new audit for Johnson O'Malley funds from 2010 to 16, which will include the JOM um, Department of Diné Education audits. No, no, sir. Um, Kevin, can you explain one more time, please? It's not a new audit. It, well, it's not going to be a whole new audit. I think we're going to have, we need to go over um, the findings and have them revisited and to justify, to make sure that these, audit, that these findings are, you know, what they are. Can, can we do that through contact, contract services um, or do you want to do an RFP? I think we need to do an RFP, Madam President, that way we can have it. Make sure it's a, a state uh, auditor that is qualified for this position. Okay, so, but our, the other option again, like I said, was um, we can go through a contract services to review the first report. Okay, so my question with that would be, so was that done for this first report? With, with this first report, with the Manning report, that was. Yeah, I, li I, li I would like to see a copy of the RFP on that. Madam President. So, okay, um, okay. Uh, Madam President, real yes. quick. Um, I know, like I was saying, that the Navajo Nation, that they do their audits, and I know, um, I don't know, I know if we were to ask, would, the, if they would be able to provide that audit for us and to review this report, and then that way maybe they pick up the costs instead of um, us and have the Navajo Nation do an audit on a scope that we might ask them for? Mm -hmm. 
Um, Ms. White, do you know if anything as far as uh, how, how they, how they, like she said, that they do do audits, how that happens, or if it does happen at all? Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. When Navajo Nation comes on site, the program overview, They're not necessarily the, the budgetary parts, but how are we implementing the program that we set out that we were going to be doing. So they do that annually, and they meet with the program director, coordinator. So they go through that. And I can ask for copies of those. Okay, because I'm, cause I'm thinking they have to, don't they monitor our spending or anything at all? Yes, they do. Okay, so we, I, would, we would, I would want documentation on that um, to see how they um, oversee our spending and if they find you know, anything suspicious or any, any type of findings with those reports. And Ms. White, Dr. White, um, you know, that's one thing that Alice Benali kind of mentioned to us when we were sitting there talking about, um, about the audit and she did mention that she would get or ask Oh gosh, I forgot the company out of Albuquerque. I don't know if you remember the name. Um, that she did mention that that you know they could assist since they um, the Johnson O'Malley is subcontracted under them that they may be able to do the audit um, through their firm or from Albuquerque. I don't know where that's at. Ms. Manuelito, I can ask um, Ellen. Thomas, as Might far as what, what company they use and what they can do for us to help us out. The KPG or K, KMP? KPMG. Oh, okay. Out of Albuquerque. They, she, she said they use this, the, the DOTI uses that to audit their, their books and programs. So and they're familiar. So if that's, that is on the approved state list, as long as it doesn't, their proposal doesn't go over the threshold, we wouldn't have to. RFP. Board members, it is the first one that's on that a list that was provided for us. Um, just to let you guys know. I don't, I don't know if we have that list. Oh, it was. It was. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you had the list. It's, it's, it's just a list of the state approved auditors. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I'll pass it down so you guys can look at it. Sorry. Madam President? Yes. Um, Mr. Mitchell, I think you need to really specify that um, with this other audit that we're asking, not uh, Ms. Um, Giovanna, I think we just need a spot check, is what we're um, recommending, is to do the spot check on some of those deficiencies that came out of that, that audit? It would probably be best before we attempted to get a quote for services if we specifically outlined what we were looking for. That way when they provide us a quote, they'll, they'll know what we're anticipating as an end product. That way we can get a good quote from them. Because if they come on site and it turns out we want something different, the quote that they give us won't, won't be valid. So do we get with you later to, if you, wanted to work with Mr. Chipetti or how, however the board decides to, to actually create this scope, what I would call a scope of work. Uh -huh. um, and then that in writing is what we would provide to that auditor requesting a quote. So when can you provide us with the scope that you guys provided before? Um, I'll email that to Mr. Chipetti today. Thank you. Madam President? Yes. Um, I think regarding the scope that what <coughs> we're asking as part of that is that rather than just an independent new audit, that there also be a review of the findings or the report from this previous accountant's report because there were some p points in this report that are worthwhile to us to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. There are items raised as far as information that we should pay attention to and use, but there were other points made that we had some doubts about and concerns about as to whether the, the report was objective because some of us know the history associated with, uh, with some of the relationships of the accounting firm and uh, in terms of whether they could do an unbiased report. And so I think we should specify perhaps uh, 
authorize the president to identify some of those identify those items to uh, Ms. Hanks and to the superintendent uh, for, so that those can be looked at where we had questions about whether they were uh, accurate and also uh, in that process I believe some of the items in here have already been addressed administratively and those should be perhaps uh, gone through if, if there are items that really don't need to take time and attention and money <laughs> you know if they're resolved but I think there were items that we want a specific review from another uh, another accountant or another auditor uh, for a second opinion so noted Ken Nine. any other comments on this board members there is a motion on the floor can you repeat the motion madam president Mr. Mitchell has motion to um, get a second um, review of the report that was submitted to um, the board under the Manning um, firm or services and that they, we would also get reports from um, previous audits or as it was reviewed by Mrs. Um, um, with Dr. White program reviews um, from the Johnson, uh, Navajo Nation Johnson O'Malley and to add the time frame to last year the 2000 to, to up to 2015 sorry that'd be 2015 16 2015 year. 16 any addition or deletions roll call please mr. Menini yes miss Jeff yes Mr. Heineman? Yes. Ms. Manuelito? Yes. Madam President? Yes. Uh, I'd like to have a time frame on this audit. Uh, Ms. Hanks, can we have a time frame f to request this audit be completed? Um, Madam President, members of the board, Mr. Manini, the inquiry that you have will depend upon the scope of work and which auditor we're able to get. Um, I will note that all school district county and state audits are happening right now our due dates to the state auditor start November 10th and run through the end of the year so it's just going to depend upon us finding an audit firm that actually has the manpower to be able to do it right now okay thank you miss Hanks it's audit season <laughs> thank you also okay moving on to five um, present a present of draft correction action plan for IEC by superintendent and action to approve the action plan. Mr. Chipetti? Thank you. And I'd like to state this is a draft correction plan of JOM, um, not IEC. You're welcome. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> had complaints filed um, because of using those work terms simultaneously and I, I do want to say that this is the JOM plan which if you'll pass, take one and pass it down um, Madam President members of the board um, met with um, Dr. White and I um, really and, and Miss Hanks and Mr. Hyatt went through the the report of procedures um, by Manning and Associates and looked at all the areas that came up as um, potential findings. Um, Dr. White and I then put together a draft proposal. Um, Ms. Moffat wasn't in the district. Um, she was out for a week, week or so. She came back, we sat down with her to get her input, and then I, I did give to the IEC last night, but since it wasn't on the agenda, we weren't able to discuss it, so I would like to get their input more in the future. Um, first one is an, the action item that we looked at. They were talking about expenditure timelines, uh, making sure that they were efficient, 
and then meeting the uh, objective and goals. Um, the chart that was in the findings showed that we had um, spending throughout the year, but an abnormal amount in June. So it was like spend, 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 and then right at the end, liquidate. Um, and again, in June, our students aren't in school. So um, what we're looking at doing, um, this doesn't go just for JOM. This goes for all of our grants. We've asked each of our departments to write a 90-day plan. So really, um, between the beginning of this year, July 1, and Christmas, uh, a 90-day plan that sets the goals and objectives of the department. Um, it also works on aligning the spending plan of the department with the schools, which is the second one. Um, the directors working directly with the principals and zone directors on the school 90-day plans to ensure that they're aligned with the JOM application and the department 90-day plan. What we saw a lot in the past were schools wrote plans and then nobody ever reviewed them. And they put down items that weren't allowable under JOM. And then when they request to purchase them, we'd have to say no. Um, so we're making sure now that from the get-go, what the school is writing is allowable. Um, really meeting the, the four areas um, for spending federal money. Is it allowable? Is it reasonable? Is it allocable? And is it necessary? I got all four without people having to write prompts up in the back. I usually have to have little cue cards. So the schools that are submitting things that are not allowable or allowable, is there going to be training provided to the principals or the coordinator, or not coordinator, the Indian education <coughs> teachers, I guess the secretary or whoever submits the invoices or requests, will, those be, will, will training be provided for them? Um, Madam President, we've already started. Um, we did a a first round of training in July with the IEC itself. Um, we did do it as part of our administrative conference for principals, and I know we've been pulling secretaries in for the procurement training and such, and we've been including there. So we've already hit one initial training with, again, administration, secretaries, and then also the committee members, so that they, as they're out at the schools helping, um, they can give good direction. And, and then we have some ongoing training scheduled, which I will cover in just a bit. Um, we've also revised, um, Ms. Moffitt revised the school site plan template for ordering materials and supplies um, to specifically identify with the program goals and objectives. Um, this was taken in the order form and adding a column, and in that column they need to put down what goal and objective um, their purchase is meeting in conjunction with the JOM um, application. Um, starting actually way back January of last year, um, we added um, two signatures on every RPO request, and that was Dr. White's and mine. So as the request for purchase comes through the, direct, uh, the director of JOM, it then goes to the associate superintendent and then to me. And this is where we're catching a lot of things where what I call the stranger test. If we read the request and we can't tell that it is aligned to meeting the unique needs of Native American children or the preservation of language and culture, then we're sending it back to the schools for a justification. So we're thinking this will bring us in line to spending the money appropriately. And then our goal is to be broke in these programs by December. So the money is spent, the items are received to be used by the students this actual school year. Um, the second one was um, dealing with the 25 CFR, the federal law, and ensuring that the elections are in line with 25 CFR and DOTI requirements. Um, the director has already sent out to the schools procedures and a timeline for all the schools to have elections for this school year. And we're running those in conjunction with the advisory school council elections at each school. So the ASC is electing two parents, two staff members, and a community member to help with the guidance and advising of the school. And at the same time, they're, they're electing an IEC member, who have I've asked to also sit on the, the ASC councils at the school, in addition to their duties of working with the IEC committee here at central office. 
But sir, uh, they don't have to do that though, right? They can just be an IEC member and not an ASC? Um, they can, but um, for best practices and to ensure that a Native American voice from the community is, is helping guide the school, it, it is best practice and, and recommended. Um, just but, I, but by law, it doesn't have to. Yeah, I, I think that having and more parental involvement of having an ASC, um, Native or not, would be valuable, and then also an IEC to get more parental involvement. I think it would be good to have two parents um, representing the school. But if, if they're volunteering to be do both, I think that would be great too. Madam President, it's, it's the minimum ASC plus the IEC. So we're not saying replace one of your ASC members with the IEC. It is have the, the mandatory two for the ASC plus the IEC. So we are looking for more involvement rather than a replacement, okay? Um, Dodie has, has stressed to us that um, the CFR does say elections, so there cannot be any appointments allowed at any level. Um, they have mandated that we do elections and, and we are working on that. Um, we're asking each school to not only have their elected IEC member, but the second vote gem getter be an alternative member. Um, we do have a number of parents who move off or jobs change or situations change where they cannot finish out the year. And then instead of having a vacancy, we'd love to have an alternate or even if the person can't make a meeting, having the alternate come to the meeting again, trying to maximize that parental involvement that 25 CFR asks for. And then of course, still in, in the regular guidelines, they have to have a resolution from the local chapter within the school attendance boundary um, required for membership. So those are in process now. You've seen a lot, I've seen a lot of the schools advertising um, and, and it's, it's very, very exciting to see. Um, our goal is 35 members on the IEC with the 35 schools. Um, action three. Um, talked about paling of mileage and also the Open Meetings Act guidance. Um, by the state auditor guidelines, um, all mileage reimbursements will be set at the state guidelines, which is at 80% of federal rates. And this was corrected way back in February and we, we are in compliance there. Um, the Open Meetings Act, we've been working on doing the training. Um, been working, um, President Manuelito, Monica, yeah. Um, uh, and I w worked it out this summer that we're going to be doing the OMA training in October during the, the JOM orientation. And, and I have talked to the Chamber of Commerce and they said that they would be willing to do that training for us. So um, right now the training is scheduled for October um, and also we are in compliance. The, the director has been posting the meeting notes and agendas on the website and such based on your board approved timelines that you, you all established for, for your guidance. So that, that one we're, we're, we're doing real well in my opinion and um, we should be having an upcoming training in October. Fourth one was um, they, they show that, that many of the bylaws were changed um, that never went through the Board of Education or DOTI. So we're saying that the, the director will forward all proposed IEC bylaws to the GMCS board for approval. Once you have approved it, it will then be a, um, forwarded to DOTI for their approval. Um, this is something DOTI very much stressed because when they come in to do negotiations, um, the bylaws they had did not match the bylaws that we were using because of changes that they weren't aware of. And that one I think is an easy fix just, just with good good um, communication getting to our board. The last ones follow all state GMCS procurement codes and delivery processes. This is an issue that we had where um, our department was not following our delivery guidelines or our procurement guidelines. Um, so we changed this last year again. These are ones that have already been in effect. Um, the first one is in 2016. We did do some procurement training with the, the Indian Education Committee and the JOM director. We have done it with the principals and with secretaries. Um, uh, future trainings are scheduled. Um, upcoming October JOM, we have another one. And then we have some upcoming individual ones with schools that mainly have new secretaries and such. Um, the trainings really 
preventing after the fact purchases. Um, cannot go out and get a good or service um, without having a purchase order in hand. Um, the OMB super circular does not allow to use federal funds when you purchase something that you don't have a purchase order approved beforehand. And, and we had a number of those that um, it looks like we're not using our JOM funds, but we're in a sense we're not allowed to use the JOM funds and we're having to use the operational funds instead. Um, all items, um, items in the past were being delivered straight to a school or they were being delivered to here at central office and then the department's delivering goods. We've stopped that. Um, our policy has always been all items when ordered, you'll, you'll have the address for delivery to our warehouse. Um, so we're not approving POs that do not have our warehouse delivery address. And we're not approving any purchase orders that do not have a school code. Um, we do not have anything shipped here to sit and be distributed to schools. Um, everything should go to the warehouse and directly to a school. Um, all items um, have that site code. So when the warehouse checks things in and delivered to the school, um, this, they're signed stating they have received those items and they are on their inventory. And then anything for parental cost or direct student use, um, we will have student signatures um, for audit purposes to show that they have received the items and then we can prove that they went to a, an allowable person, in this case a person with a, a CIB on file. Um, we're ensuring district inventory processes. Um, I've been very worried about some of the purchases that we were doing just because they're easily um, stolen materials. Um, they're highly desirable materials in some cases. Um, rugs, baskets, drums. Um, they're very easy to walk off with. So we're ensuring that each school is doing a good inventory and then that our JOM department here is following up annually and then we looked and JOM cannot purchase a camera. They wanted a camera for the inventory purposes and then also to, um, you know, publicity at their festivals and such as that. So I, I did put an allowable that we would purchase a camera from district funds to, to give to the JOM department to be able to assist in the inventory and then instead of just sitting the rest of the year also be used for uh, documentation of festivals and, and other positive aspects. And uh, we felt this would address the findings and um, I'm presenting it to you as a draft um, as, as requested on the agenda. Sir, I just would like to add or ask for a correction on your second sentence on based on the, the, the title, based on the audit, um, to scratch out audit and put report. Board members, questions, comments? Madam President. Yes, Mr. Um, Hedeman. Two things. One is simply, uh, Mr. Cipetti, on action two, I would like the board members to receive, because I'd like to receive, a copy of the procedures for the elections that were sent out, just to see what that, uh, how that was set up. And uh, I presume that's one set of procedures. I mean, the same for all schools, so that shouldn't be long. The second thing is I think we should, uh, after this meeting, board members individually look over the report and the action plan. I think the action plan is good in itself, but I'm not sure that there aren't specific items here that we would also want addressed. And so we could identify those and indicate those to the superintendent if there are other things we, we think should, should be addressed as far as, because there are a lot of details in here. Uh, and these are, these are relevant, but I'm not sure it's comprehensive in, in terms of every little thing in here that we might want to see in the corrective action plans. Okay, sir. And it's good to hear that some of these have been already um, completed or addressed, um, which is a good thing too. I think that there's a lot of things that have already been taken care of that we can scratch off the list. Madam, um, Madam President, um, I'd really like to thank 
on the IEC, Mr. Hinneman and Mr. Nez, um, because I think a lot of these that we've already implemented is when we had the two meetings um, last year um, where we went line by line over that report and discussed them and already had some ideas. So a lot of these are stuff we've already put in with, with input from the board members who were there and, and the committee itself. So um, those were very productive at the time and just wanted to say thanks. And, and this is what I kind of mentioned this morning too, that um, just for the board and the community and here to know that, um, that, you know, with the election process, it says election needs to be held and from um, the parents and election has to happen. And IEC are parents, they're all parents. And I just want to continue to make that clarification for our IEC members that um, being on the IEC, you, and one of the requirements is that you, you know, you are a parent of the district. So I'm glad that we do have a very active um, IEC um, committee. Anything else, board members? Thank you very much. Thank you for this um, update, Mr. Chipetti, and. Anybody motion to adjourn? I motion to approve the draft as presented. Oh, to approve the draft? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sorry. Motion made by Mr. Hiddeman, I mean, Mr. Menini, um, to approve the draft that was presented to us. Um, Mr. Chipetti, do you know when you'll have another one? Um, since this is just a draft? Um, it, it's at the direction of you all. Um, did you want to wait for the review? Do you, um, this this is something coming from, from you all as a directive, so I, I would ask that I meet your timelines, so. Madam, Madam um, President. Yes. Um, and then Mr. Chipetti, you know, um, with each of the school, can we also put that in there? Because I know I don't think there's enough, or I don't know how many members are in there right now and how many more do we still need to cover for members within the school district or within the schools? Madam President, Ms. Jeff, I believe right now we have 15 or 16 IEC members. Um, we're, we're still looking to, to max at a full 35. Thank you. So I think he, he mentioned that election is happening currently. So maybe that would be another report um, in a, a month or so when elections close. I believe the first meeting in October will be wonderful. Um, I think the deadline we put to, since we're doing it in conjunction with the ASC was mid-September, 20-something of September was the deadline to have them done. So I should know by October really where we sit on ASC and IEC membership at that time for you. Madam President, therefore I'd like to have that uh, final draft as an action item on the October 1st meeting. Motion made by Mr. Manini. Uh, roll call, please. Ms. Jeff. Um, Madam President, do we need to give this to the PED, above the Public Education Department, this draft, so that they show us that we're trying to act upon those letters? Can. Um, Mr. Chipetti, can you send me a, a, hard, a soft copy of your correction action plan, sir? And I will forward that on. Thank you, Joe, for that. Roll call. Ms. Jeff? Yes. Mr. Heineman? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Manuelito? Yes. Madam President. Mr. Hinneman. May I just mention in connection with um, the item on uh, each school having an elected IEC member, an alternate member, last evening there was an IEC meeting uh, that uh, discussed membership eligibility and so on, and I think the goal that everybody's had for some time is to have full members, full, you know, one member, 
representing each school in the district right now. Some people are representing several. But um, I, th I think what's happened in the past over a period of perhaps years is different procedures have been used for electing and selecting and appointing, you know, IEC members uh, and the bylaws have changed at times and understandings have changed and so on. And I think the IEC is working hard and Abu Nation was present last night uh, to discuss how to become not only compliant with the CFRs and DOTI requirements, but to simply come to a, a clear way to have a consistent proper election process for election where the parent members are elected by parents. And uh, I, I think it's just the IC is really working to, to create a consistent, smooth operation, you know, so that they're on solid footing on that. And I think they worked on that last night, and I think everybody's got the same goal there. So it's got a clear, proper election process, and we have a full possible 35-member IEC, which is a huge committee, but that means all, all schools are represented. It would be nice to see the numbers again. I know during um, my term as IEC, we did have a large IEC membership. So I'm very thankful that we're going to get back up to those numbers again. Um, I would like to um, inform the board that we have, I have been getting a lot of comments from the IEC members and i um, very thankful of the the IEC has um, started to change in a more positive note and that they feel more comfortable at this time. So I think that we, we should be very thankful about that and the direction that our IEC is headed. So thank you very much for that, board members. Can I please have, if no other questions, a motion to adjourn? Madam President. Yes. I move to um, motion to adjourn. Thank you, Ms. Chair. Roll call. Mr. Manini? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Heeneman? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Manuelito? Yes. 508. Thank you. Thank you.